Next to the stage is an ophthalmologist in training. After 15 years of university studies, he's in his final year of practice. Please welcome Dr. Keon Majetti. Well, thank you all so much uh, for having me here tonight. This is such an incredible panel of really incredible creative people. Uh, and then there's me. Um, so. Um, so I'm Dr. Kian Majetti. Um, they asked me to write a biography, and I said I was in, I uh, couldn't think of anything better, so I said I was in the 16th year of university training. Uh, to try and dress that up a little bit, I said I was in grade 28. Um, <laughs> but when I said that out loud, it just made me seem terrifically old. So I, I, I'm just a doctor. Um, I'm in my last year of surgical training uh, in ophthalmology, or eye surgery. Uh, this means I spend my days and nights doing anything surgical in and around the eye. Uh, from learning how to take out cataracts during the day to fixing uh, any and all trauma that happens to the eye overnight. Now, I've only been around doing this for a couple of years in my training, um, but I've seen some crazy, crazy trauma, and some of them are very unique to Calgary. So think, uh, I think you should never stand behind a horse uh, at Stampede. That's lesson number one. Uh, and lesson number two is you have it on my good authority that all the cool kids at school are wearing safety glasses. It's the new big thing on all of the runways of Paris and Milan. So go get yourself a pair today. So I want to just explain a bit more specifically what it is I spend my day doing. So cataract surgery is one of the most commonly uh, performed surgery, and it's one of the safest surgeries in the whole world. Uh, and a cataract, and the whole reason why I'm, I'm kind of here on this panel tonight, is uh, it, a cataract is part of the human lens. Uh, so it's the lens that refracts light from the outside of our eye uh, and uh, focuses it, the outside world, onto our retina, the back of our eyes. As we get older, that lens hardens and it becomes denser, uh, and it makes the vision that we have a little bit hazier. It makes the world appear a bit hazier. Uh, and our surgery uh, incredibly fixes that. Um, and how it does that, I think, is, is worth a talk. So what we do, I, without getting into any detail, um, for some of the queasier stomachs in the audience, what we do, broadly speaking, is um, we take a small blade, it's about two millimeters in thickness, we make a small cut in the eye. Then we put in an ultrasound probe into the eye, which pulverizes the lens. Now, just for context, uh, the lens is only about four millimeters in thickness, and it's about the size of a Smarty. It sits suspended in the eye by a thin hammock, which we call the capsule, which is only five microns thick. Uh, so just for context, that's about 100 times thinner than a human hair, um, or about as thick as the uh, fiber of a spider web. That's the size of the lens we're putting in everyone's eyes. So as we do the surgery, we've got to be careful not to violate this thin capsule. Uh, as we break the lens into pieces, vacuum and suck it up out of the eye, and then insert a plastic lens into your eye to fix your vision. So it's pretty cool. So I, I was telling my parents about this surgery, and they said, I can't believe you can do that. And I, I was taken aback because I had to think for a second, and I thought, I don't know that, like, like I can't believe I can do that either. Um, so it got me thinking about how somebody becomes a surgeon, or in fact, how anybody can become able to do anything hyper-technical. How someone who likes swimming can become an Olympic swimmer, or how some creative kid who likes watching TV can go on to become an award-winning filmmaker like those in our audience today. Um, now, I wasn't that prodigy kid who was taking radios apart and building robots and playing Beethoven. I, I was a run-of-the-mill kid. I still am a run-of-the-mill person. Um, but as I reflected on my journey uh, to how to hone the craft of surgery, I realized that there's probably a couple of ingredients that are in common to what I'll call the craft cocktail. Um, so number one is time. Famously, people say that it takes 10,000 hours to learn how to become good at something. I think it's actually definitely way more than that. And more than time, I think it's actually being able to sit with boredom. Being able to do something very technical is by definition full of repetition. Musicians do scales, ad nauseum, athletes do practice drills, surgeons, same thing. So it, it isn't about the hours of time you spend, it's about what you do within those hours. And then a thing I've learned recently, it's perhaps more important what you do with your off hours, spending time with your family and doing things that revitalize and regenerate you. The second ingredient in the cocktail of craft, or the craft cocktail, is mentorship. So even the most renegade chefs, your Gordon Ramsay types, who claim to be self-made, will quietly admit to the fact that they spent a few summers in France or worked under so-and-so. 
Um, nobody becomes able to do anything in a vacuum at a high level. Just like an Olympic swimmer needs a coach, a surgeon needs a surgical coach, and I've been very lucky today, I've had people here in the audience who were able to come today who've actually held my hands as a surgeon and say, hold the scalpel this way, hold the scalpel that way. Um, and so in our own journeys, whatever we're doing in life, uh, in our careers, in our, in our hobbies, as you work to become uh, working at a high level, just remember to be grateful for your coaches um, and then have the philosophy to one day pass that on. Number three out of four is humor. So I remember when I first started, um, I was so nervous, I would hunch over, I would stare directly into the scope, I wouldn't blink for seven minutes at a time because I was so focused and so concentrated on, on the task that I was doing. And a really big game changer mo moment for me was when one of my mentors made a joke in the operating room. And, and I won't repeat that here today, um, but I just, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I started laughing, I was relaxed, and it's kind of a weird thing to, to have a moment of laughter in a serious place like an operating room. But actually what it did is it led to relaxation. And my hand, motion, my hand motions became more fluid. And I just became more at ease with what I was doing. So not to make light of what we do, but you know, surgery is very serious business. But you should and you can still have fun while you're doing it. The act of becoming anything uh, always requires kind of holding a carry, carrying a heavy weight. Um, but when we find those moments of lightness along the way, uh, it takes that weight temporarily off. The fourth and most important component to the craft cocktail is to find wonder in what we do on a daily basis. And that's why I'm so humbled to, to be on this panel with all these incredible people, because you're all finding wonder in the day to day, um, in, in the films and, and the shows that you're making. When we try to become something at a high level, I think it's incumbent that we reacquaint ourselves with the wonder in the task that we're doing. Every image I've shown you tonight is actually just a picture of a human eye. I think that's absolutely incredible. I hope you do too. When I take a step back and I, I look at how incredible the eye is, it alleviates all those sleepless nights, it alleviates all those endless practice drills. Uh, and so the most important thing we can remember uh, whenever we're called to do a task is to remember how lucky we are to have the chance to work hard at work worth doing. Thank you.